Okay, so welcome to the next video in the um, playlist on integration. In this video, we are going to finally prove the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, so, um, we're going to prove uh, the second fundamental theorem of calculus, and if we've got time, we might prove the first fundamental theorem of calculus as well. The second fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, so it's the one that uh, you will use more common. It's the one. It's the way uh, that if you did A level maths, um, which you probably did, or the equivalent in other countries, um, it's the way that when you first learn integration, it's the only way you do integrate. It's the fact that the integral of f of x dx from a to b. So let's assume we've got this. This is our picture. We have our closed bounded interval a, b, and we have some function f which maps a, b onto the real numbers, and we're assuming that this is Riemann integrable on a, b. Uh, then uh, the function is equal to the antiderivative evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at a. So if this function, um, and what we'll show is that if it is integrable uh, on a, b, uh, then uh, the equivalent statement is that the first fundamental theorem of calculus, in fact, is that there exists an antiderivative. If f of x is integrable on a, b, there will exist an antiderivative. And the second fundamental theorem of calculus tells you that if you know what this antiderivative is, uh, the integral between a and b of f of x is equal to f of b minus f of a. So that's the, how you integrate when you are um, when you are a, uh, an A-level student. You, all you do is you say, the integral of x squared, I'm not going to bother with all that stuff we did in the last video where we uh, take this infinite limit, uh, the limit of this infinite sequence of partial sums. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, I know what the what function differentiates to give that to that. It's the antiderivative x cubed over 3. Therefore, all I need to do is evaluate that at the uh, endpoints. So the, function, the value is b cubed minus over 3 minus a cubed over 3. Uh, so that is uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, and now let's prove it. Um, so, the proof. And the proof uses the mean value theorem big time. So what we do is we start actually with this side, the right hand side. Uh, so if we look at f of b minus f of a, well, consider a dissection. Consider a dissection a dissection D, uh, which is equal to, you know, a little dissection of this. It's not necessarily like a dissection that we considered in the last video where all of the pieces were an even size, so I'll just show that an equal size, rather. Um, so D we could write as x0, which is equal to A, and then that's less than or equal to x1, which is less than or equal to x2, and it goes on and on and on and on up to some finite value xn, which is then equal to b. And it's important that you realise that, that every, every stage a dissection is a finite number of splittings. You've only split it up finitely many times for each of these. Yes, you can take the limit as uh, the dissection becomes finer and finer, but a, each dissection at each point is finite. So if we take any dissection you want here, uh, then let's, um, let's we've got f of b over here, and we've got f of a over here. So what we do is we sort of like, if I just put in xn minus 1, just so that I can do this. If what we do is we add in, uh, sorry, we subtract f xn minus 1, and then we add it back on again. So basically I'm saying, all I'm saying is something pretty trivial. I'm saying that f of b is equal to, uh, minus f of a is equal to f of b minus f of x n minus 1 plus f of x n minus 1 uh, minus f of a. I've not done anything incredibly fancy there, although this is going to be incredibly clever what we're going to do. Um, so then what we do is we go further. We do it for each and every one of these. So for this one I'm going to add on, I'm going to subtract off x uh, f of x uh, 2 and then I'm going to add it back on and I'm going to go all the way down so for each of these points in the dissection I'm going to add on uh, so I'm going to subtract it first and then add it back on so what I end up with is that this is equal to f of b minus f of x n minus 1 uh, plus f of x n minus 1 minus f of x n minus 2 plus f of x uh, n minus 2 all the way down, continue on, 
uh, to uh, we'll have uh, minus f of x1 plus f of x1 minus what we could write as f of x0 where we've called x0a and we could write f of b over here as f of xn. So yes I've done something quite odd, uh, it may seem unmotivated at the moment um, but you can't stop me from doing this. I haven't done anything that's incorrect. This is still a great big finite sum, so it's you know it still obeys the laws of algebra rather than the laws of infinite series. Um, so I haven't done anything wrong here. You cannot stop me. I've just used algebra uh, and um, yeah. Uh, so I could rewrite this nicely as the sum uh, for of f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 uh, from i is equal to 1 to n. So let's agree that this is the same thing as this. So when i is equal to 1 we've got f of x 1 minus f of x 0. So this is this bit here. Then when x is equal to 2, f of x 2 minus f of x 1. So I haven't written on f of x 2 here but I could have put that there and then we'd have had minus f of x 2 above it with f of x 3 here. So that bit's there and it goes on all the way up to xn minus xn minus 1, which is here. Uh, so that is the same as this. It's a telescoping sum, and if you were to add this, what you um, what you get is um, f of b minus f of a. Okay, so now, now we apply the mean value theorem, because the mean value theorem told us that mean value theorem is that uh, there exists an uh, we'll call it a y, um, a y i, which is an element of x i minus one to x i. So all I'm doing is uh, taking one of these bits of these dissections, x i minus one. Oh goodness! Um, and we've got uh, some point in here which is y i, and all I'm saying is that uh, we're using the mean value theorem to tell us that there is a point where the derivative of big F uh, evaluated at y i is equal to the finite derivative in a sense. So f of x i uh, minus f of x i minus one all over x i minus x i minus one. So why is that so clever? Because in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take this bit, we're going to multiply this up here, and we're going to replace this in this great big series with this times this, and the derivative of big F is a little f evaluated at yi. So we're getting closer to um, back to um, an upper Riemann sum and a lower Riemann sum. So uh, in the next video we'll go continue with this.